Hi there. In my last video, I talked a lot about anti-aliasing, supersampling, downsampling, subsampling, but I just wanted to actually create a video and explain how to turn on normal anti-aliasing modes uh, in your video card drivers. So Minecraft right now doesn't have native anti-aliasing and the third-party mods for it, like Optifine AA, don't really work that well, at least not for me. So I still use my graphics driver. I have an NVIDIA uh, graphics accelerator <laughs> and I use the NVIDIA drivers to do it. So first of all, if you have AMD, I can't help you because I can't show you directly. You'll just have to look up uh, that information on your own. So first we need to open up our NVIDIA control panel. Just right click on the desktop go to NVIDIA control panel. And you'll probably be shown here, which is pretty much just an easy, quick to look at uh, screen to quickly change settings. I don't like it because, you know, it's, it's easy. Easy means no control. So go to manage 3D settings over here. And you'll see a lot of options, which you don't really need to worry about. First of all, I've seen people say uh, you need to turn on anisotropic filtering. No, you don't. It does not work for Minecraft because Minecraft doesn't use MIP mapping or any sort of texture, texture filtering system, which is why your textures look so bad on high resolution. Or what I mean is if you use high resolution textures, that's why they look so bad because there's no MIP mapping. In a quick sense, MIP mapping is a form where the image for the texture is scaled before being rendered to the screen. So. Leave it application controlled, it does not matter for Minecraft. The only three options you need to worry about is anti-aliasing mode, anti-aliasing setting, and anti-aliasing transparency. Anti-aliasing mode is how it's going to be applied to the application. We're gonna use override. Enhance is a little more complicated and even I don't really understand it. It's sort of like if you used one setting, it can apply extra settings to it. It's kind of odd. So we're gonna use override and I will override anything in the game. Um, you can create program settings for it, but it's kind of odd because sometimes it'll show up as java.w.exe, sometimes it'll show up as Minecraft. It's kind of messed up. So I would just go with global and you can just change it later. So anti-aliasing setting. This is your main anti-aliasing. So you have two modes. You have transparency for textures and uh, Famously, Half-Life 2 had, you know, its chain link fences, and back when Transparency came out back in 2005 or 6, that was a big deal because Half-Life 2 could look really smooth now. So Minecraft, Transparency anti-aliasing is going to be, pretty much is going to be applied to your textures to clean them up, and also for the leaves and things like that. Those are also textures. But we're going to look at anti-aliasing setting. I recorded already this video, but I felt I was rambling too much, so I'm going to create this make this as concise as possible. Each of these options have different numbers of what are called color samples and covered samples. Color samples are the actual workhorse of what is known as multi-sample anti-aliasing, which is a much quicker but slightly less pretty version of super sampling. Super sampling is really brute force. You're basically just increasing the resolution by four times. This is a much faster method because it's only being applied to edges, which really is most of your aliasing. The two options, you have color, which like I said is where you're getting, getting the quality from. That's where it's actually going into the scene, rendering a sample, or think of it like a sub-pixel, and that's what's being used to build the new pixel. So think of it like a box, and you have a bunch of little points in there, and they're usually they're randomized. So you have color pixels, sorry, color samples, which actually grab a color from the scene after it's being rendered in, because. Uh, games are rendered in passes, and this is done before shaders. Then you have coverage samples. Coverage samples are really easy to render, really easy to use, really easy to compute. Basically, they're just extra points to get um, if it's on a polygon or not. If you have a lot of color coverage samples, you get a really high resolution image of where the, where the edge is. And then that's used to weight the calculation for the image. So usually it's used to create smoother gradients using the information that's already been rendered. Say if, if, you, uh, if you sample four colors, four color samples, you can use extra coverage samples in order to sort of make that go a little bit longer, you could say. All right, so I'm gonna go down the list, and I'm gonna explain everything. 
This has two color samples. Every color sample also has a coverage sample paired with it. It's together. So, two color samples with its paired coverage samples, four color samples with its four coverage samples. This has four color samples with the paired cover samples and then a four additional cover samples okay if, if i'm losing you i'm going to link in the description a chart that shows all this stuff then you have the 8x is eight cover samples with its pair and no additional coverage samples this has four color samples with its pair and 12 cover samples this has eight Sorry, the 16XQ is eight color samples and I believe eight additional coverage samples. All right. And then 32X CSAA is eight color samples and 24 coverage samples. All right. And the stuff here is basically just since I have two video cards, you can actually use both together to add additional points in there. So you can get up to 64X CSAA, which looks brilliant on Minecraft because you can also do transparency as well. So just as another quick note, uh, transparency, you have multi-sample, 2x, 4x, 8x. I use 4x, generally speaking, um, because when I'm using Minum, I'm using the super sample anyways, which means you don't really need that much anti-aliasing anyways. So normally I do 4x, um, but a quick note about these options. This, the transparency only goes as high as the color samples you're using. So if I have this set to, uh, 4x and I set this to 2x it's only actually going to give me two samples or, sorry 2x if I set it to 8x it's going to be the same so it's only been limited to 2x because I have two samples here if I set this to 4x it's going to go between 1 and 4 1 and 4 up to 4 if I go to 8 it's still going to be 4 that's just the way it works if I set this to 8x CSAA remember this has 8x CSAA has four color samples it's only gonna go up to 4X color samples. So this would work and this would look fine. You can also do 16X CSAA. Remember this also has four color samples with 12 uh, coverage samples. So this, is what, this will work fine as well. And this can go down as well. Um, 2X will work just as well. And a quick but very important note is you have to use transparency anti-aliasing. Okay, if you don't, your Minecraft will look like this. Ah, it's bad. Don't, don't, friends don't let friends not use transparency anti anything. <laughs> so even if it's a 2x, it will solve that liney problem. Um, in the past, I've seen a lot of people having this issue, but it's pretty simple to fix. You need transparency. So actually, um, you know, this will work fine as well. Now I have a chart that I took of 720p with Optifine multi-core far distance at specific options and I have all these frame rates in here I'm gonna calculate the percentage of how much you know how much of a hit it took Minecraft doesn't support SLI so this is for a single GTX 580 at 830 megahertz I will post that information in the description probably if you're interested um, and you, know, you can always test it for yourself so I if you have just an average system this creates a huge boost in performance or sorry huge boost in image quality and I'll be posting some images at the end of the video uh, where you can see some comparisons between these. So I guess the final point is test it out. This is how you actually turn it on. So all you do is hit apply and load up Minecraft. If you're looking to change it, you have to close Minecraft first completely. So if you have Minecraft here, I'm going to log in. Okay. So if you loaded up a world to test it, you know, somewhere in here, and then you go back to the main screen, you have to get out of here because this is actually a rendered window. So quit game and then load it back up. All right. And then you can go back and change your settings and then reload Minecraft. You have to close Minecraft all the way or else your settings aren't going to change anything. So if you're on a low end system, you could easily just do uh, 2x and 2x. That's still going to be so much better than normal Minecraft. Uh, as you'll see in the end of the video, I'm just have some, some sample um, images in there. Here's the other thing. It's also going to make your videos look a lot better because the shimmering on your video is actually going to create more complexity in the image, which means your encoder is going to have to work harder to encode that. On top of that, YouTube, um, you know, is pretty flat and it's not very customizable. So your video is going to look a lot worse if you don't use anti-aliasing. 
It's going to create a lot of contrast, a lot of temporal contrast, and a lot of complexity, you could say. So turn on anti-aliasing, it'll make your videos look better, um, even as far as compression goes. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.